Next on list I want to talk about here quickly. Um, this is quite funny. This is, yeah, this is really, really funny. I like this. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen this. But someone shared a clip of Brendan Shaw and Eric Griffin. For whatever reason, I guess because Eric Griffin is a UFC casual or an MMA casual, doesn't really know much about the sport in general, but it seems like Brendan has picked um, Eric Griffin to be his main co-host when it comes to doing all those um, flashback fight things, right? Um, I don't know what is yeah, it's on his channel where he basically will go over an old fight or he'll go over something you know, interesting that happened in UFC history back in the day. Um, and they'll talk about it on the show. And I guess because Griffin was quite stern and quite kind of blunt in his assessment of Brendan's skills last time, and maybe it got a lot of views. I don't know. Something happened where they've now decided Eric Griffin's the main guy, which is funny too, because I made a video prior where I was saying that how it felt like the, the guys were basically you know, leaving Eric Griffin out of the cool guy club because he wasn't as cool as, you know, Theo Vaughan and Chris Alia. But then because Theo Vaughan's gone MIA and essentially he's too scared to basically say he wants to quit and Chris Alia is a shell of the human being he used to be, Brendan needs to kind of get somebody else in there to kind of pump up the views when it comes to King of the Sting and everything. So, that's, so it's funny that now Eric Griffin's back in back in the circle of trust. So that video that I made about Eric Griffin maybe not being part of T5K for a long run, it always gets comments where people say, oh, it aged terribly, aged terribly. But I like to think in my overinflated ego that I maybe played a part in him being welcomed back into the group. So Eric Griffin, you're welcome, my friend. You're welcome. But anyway, Brendan kind of talks about the interaction that he had with Nate Diaz back in the day. Remember behind, back uh, backstage, right? During a UFC card. And um, I think this was just after... I think this was just after Conor McGregor had fought on Mayweather, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And um, Brendan had an interaction with Nate Diaz that didn't go too well. And I guess they're, they're looking at that now on this show with Eric Griffin. But for some reason, as per usual, Brendan basically misremembers the entire exchange or purposely lies about how it went down to make himself look good. It's really interesting. And we're going to actually go over the video of what actually happened, how it happened. And we're also going to go over what Brendan said at the time when he went on Jerry Ari because he was very, um, he was very kind of apologetic when he was on JRE, but now he's trying to basically talk like Billy Badass about the entire thing. It's really funny. So this is Brendan Shaw talking about his interaction with Nate Diaz back in the day. You're 100% correct. But also, and then fans are going to be like, oh, the reason why Shaw might be a little salty towards uh, Nate is because. We had an issue when I worked for a Showtime. I was the my job was to sell the fans and the boxing fans on why Conor McGregor might have a chance to beat Floyd Mayweather. That Wrong. I remember this correctly and clearly because I remember this is the time where I started to really, really dislike Brendan and I started to really not be a fan of the show anymore in terms of the fire and the kid. If I remember correctly, Brendan Shaw was twerking super, super hard to get the Showtime gig because I guess he might have heard maybe through the, you know, through the flipping back channels of agents and whatnot that Showtime were maybe looking at him to be one of the hosts. And he was twerking really hard to get that gig. And to be fair to him too, he did a really good job in terms of hyping up the possibility of Conor McGregor beating Mayweather in the boxing fight. He was hyping it. This is before he signed any contract deal, anything. He was already hyping the thing of like, Conor McGregor's going to beat Floyd Mayweather. He's going to pose a lot of issues with him. He was talking about that fucking stance. He's going to come in weird angles. What that nonsense he was talking about, right? This is before he'd signed any paper. And he was definitely saying it, not as a bit to kind of get people to get on board and watch the fight. He was saying it because he generally believed it because this is also the time when Conor McGregor was hotter than fucking Greece. He was the main man. People thought, you know, he could do no wrong. He was basically, basically sparking everybody. So I think, you know, it's the same thing like how fucking Joe was um, obsessed with Ronda Rousey and basically said he could beat up any man in the world or some nonsense like that, right? Where people were, were a little bit delusional of fucking Conor McGregor's skill set. That's why he was saying that. So don't believe him when he tries to spin it now and say, oh, I was doing it because I was employed to drama. The no, 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 no. You believed it. You were twerking for Showtime. It worked. You got the gig. But you definitely believed Conor McGregor was going to beat Floyd Mayweather. That one, I got paid to convince people. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tough gig. Tough gig. <laughs> tough gig, dude. The lies, odds, lies. The odds were not on my side, yeah, but that yeah, was yeah. my paid gig to do that. So I'm coming up with every kind of explanation why things do it. So I you know, went on the tour, went to the fight. I was the Conor McGregor expert. Well, Nate hype bum boy, bum boy. Because you remember what he say before? We used to all say, "You say um, I'm on a Conor McGregor hype train." I don't know whatever. He was he was unapologetically a huge Conor fan, so that's why he was hyping Conor up to win the fight. Let's not deny that. 
Nate Diaz, because they have their issues, viewed me as Team Connor. So when we go to the, and I'm just filling in why I got people think I'm salty. So after that fight, I'm walking through. It's all boxing fans, and they're talking shit to me, like, whatever. I see Nate. Now, we're part of a, a alumni, man. Like, I was on the Ultimate Fighter. I was a top 10 UFC heavyweight. There's no other UFC representatives there. So there is no alumni. What we know so far about Brenda, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. Again, I was never, I didn't watch the UFC when he was in it. I only started watching UFC a bit after he basically, he basically retired, right? But for so whatever reason, Brendan has never really been liked. I don't know what it is about Brendan. Maybe it's because of the whole Reebok deal with Dana. Maybe that kind of put him at odds with the UFC in general. And maybe that kind of seeped through with some of the fighters on the roster because they didn't want to be seen to be Brendan's friend because that maybe could work against them. But in general, I've never got the... And again, it's something I've always really been odd at. It's really strange, I think, if you're a Brendan to even assess yourself. He was a pretty well-known fighter. He was a top 15, top 20, whatever you want to say, but he was a, of a decent standard. He fought some really good standard fighters. He was friends with Joe Rogan. He was on Joe Rogan podcast a lot of the time. And he was also on the UFC when the UFC was, you know, relatively still new. Or not, not even new, but relatively still recent. It wasn't like he was fighting, you know, along like in the 90s or something or whatever, maybe on the early, early 2000s. He was fighting at a time where people would generally still remember. But for whatever reason, he doesn't have the same level of love from the fans or from the industry at large. Like people just don't respect or like him in the slightest, which is really bizarre, I think, with someone of his caliber or someone of his profile. It's really, really strange. Well, I see a familiar face. It'd be like if you go to a party and it's all actors and you see the comic from a, the store or somebody yeah, you've I been around, you. you'd be like, oh, thank God, there's yeah. one of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have actually somebody to talk to. So I see Nan, I go, oh, thank God, there's another... There's a guy part of my crew. So I go, what's up, Ryan? Go to, and he goes, nah, man, I fucking told you. I'm like, I look around, I'm like, what? What, what? what are you talking about? Told me. <laughs> and he's like, I fucking, you don't know box. I'm like, whoa, dude, this was a gig, bro. Right, like, nah, I thought, right. You don't know fucking box. And then I was like, dude, calm down. What are you talking about? And I and then I get defensive because there's a fight. Of course, of course. So I go, hold up, hold up. I said he was going to land punches. He landed punches, bro. Yeah. And that just set him off. And then he wanted to square up. Wow. And I'm like, okay. And then my Showtime boss was like, you touch him, you're going to lose all the jobs, dude. <sighs> okay, okay. This guy is so bizarre in the way that he explained things. And again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, blockbuster, whatever it may be. Brendan's fucking huge. He's a heavyweight, a legit heavyweight. Nate Diaz is not a heavyweight. If he wanted to just get on top of him and squeeze his lights out, he probably could. We're not denying that. We think that is true. But to now pretend as if like you were actually ready to scrap the guy is not true because we've seen the video with subtitles. We heard everything that happened in that exchange. So this idea that this mythical Showtime person told him not touch him and you're, you, it's just uh, that he lies with such proficiency and with such on so so often that I think he generally believes what he says. I think he does generally believe what he says. I honestly do. Yeah, we yeah. cannot have that. Yeah, yeah and I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, of course we can't. So then, you know, the, the internet gets a hold of it and they, you know, manufacture it like I was talking shit to him. There's no shit talking. With that being said, like, to me, it's like, I get it. There's animosity because he thinks I'm Connor's team. I like Nate Diaz. I don't give a fuck about any of that. He doesn't like you. you back into Five years. I love how he does this all the time. I like Nate. I love Dana. They don't like you, mate. They don't like you. They never will. Stop trying to bread and be their friends now. And the funny thing as well with Nate Diaz, he was, if I'm not mistaken, was he ever champion? Or was he champion? Did he have one run at champion? I'm not really too sure. But Nate Diaz has had a very like up and down career himself. But he's still way more beloved and way more expected and adorned than Brendan will ever be. And I guess even now, you know, within his, you know, as he's winding down his career, it probably must hurt to see kind of you know Nate get all this love and he doesn't, and he's still trying to pally pally up with these guys. It's fucking bizarre. Years ago, you and Nate Diaz? <laughs> Absolutely not. I don't want to fight that savage. Absolutely not, dude. Yeah, with your cushy ass life. Now. Yeah, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Okay, so let's actually watch the video and see what actually happened and actually what actually occurred. I also find it funny. I think someone mentioned in the chat that Brenda's now trying to pretend he's fucking Eric Griffin's best friend, given how they treated Eric beforehand when when Chris was first coming back on the King of the Skid thing. Um, also, given how. Eric didn't really like Brendan to begin with because he thought that he was another person who wasn't a comedian coming in and in, infringing on his scene in terms of comedy. Given how 
Eric must know that Brendan sucks at comedy and has no business being in that industry himself. It's just an interesting thing. Like you couldn't get a way more, you couldn't get a more faker friendship if you tried. This is like a fake friendship to the, to the, but it's not fake. Maybe it's a convenient thing because they're grown ups and they need to make money and they're making content and they're being professional. But it's just funny to see them both trying to pretend that they're actual friends. It's like, you're not friends. So let's watch, let's watch the actual video of what happened, right? This is courtesy of YouTube. And it's called, as follows there, see the title, Nate Diaz and Brendan Shaw, full backstage altercation, new footage. So let's actually watch what actually occurred and we can actually compare that to what fucking Brendan had to say of what went down or what occurred in his head or how he remembers it. Because there's definitely some discrepancies in there and we're going to see it in real time. You see? So let's go. Hold on. Is that, is that the start? Is that the start? That's okay. That's the thing. So I think that's the kind of the start interaction, right? So you get this. Hold on. This is the start, right? You get this. The start is this. Nate, Mayweather didn't even try. So he didn't even try and he still absolutely demolished your boy, Colin McGregor, who obviously Nate doesn't like also. Brendan, I disagree. Floyd didn't even try. Are you sure? Connor, he didn't win four rounds. That was a whole shtick everyone was going with. Connor won four rounds. Connor won four rounds. Connor got those rounds that Mayweather didn't even try. That wasn't even trying. So Nate is definitely kind of, you know, pushing the knife in there, twisting it a little bit. And who's the Showtime guy? You can obviously, to be fair to Brendan, he does look a pissed off. He is doing that kind of cocky kind of leaning in head thing. He is clearly annoyed and kind of riled up a little bit. I don't see the Showtime guy whispering to Brendan, if you touch him, you're going to lose your gig. I don't see that happening. Maybe that's a Showtime guy. I'm not really too sure who the Showtime guy is. So that is a definite lie. But let's continue. It's all good. What's that? So what did he say? It's all good. What? He touched him as well. He said what? It's all good. It's just your lack of knowledge though. So he's clearly, clearly trying to antagonize him. This is this is a funny... I've not actually seen this entire thing. Let's actually put the thing there so it's a bit more... So it runs without stuttering too much. So he's clearly trying to antagonize Brendan a little bit, right? He is trying to antagonize Brendan. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit and get us on the screen a little bit here. This is definitely him trying to you know, poke the bear, get him to react a little bit. I can definitely see that. Put that over here. But yes, but I didn't see you. It was at this moment. He teed off on you. Right? So obviously he's trying to get at him. Okay, Nate hears that and what what? That he knew. He fucked up. Fuck you. See? So he, he stands right in front of him with a middle finger. Fuck you. Nay, I have no problem with you. Oh, bitch. <laughs> As he's still next to him, Brendan definitely heard that. Remember your career. So basically saying your career was fucking awful. Pussy. <laughs> now, does that sound like anything Brendan said in terms of the story? Does it sound like anything he said? Of course not. Just, I've said it many times on here, man. I don't really understand that guy. I don't get the lies. I really don't get the lies. I don't get the consistent nature of the lies. I don't get the lies, especially when they could be easily proven to be lies. I just don't understand it. But it just must be him just being a pathological liar. That is it. As simple as that. The man's a pathological liar. Um... He doesn't care how much he lies as long as it makes him look good. That's basically it. But it's such a weird thing to kind of lie about and then try and pretend that you're still cool with Nate and we're still cool and we're funny. Um, but yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um,